<clears throat> okay, you can go ahead. Okay. The uh, appointed hour, 5 o'clock p.m. Having been reached, I welcome everyone to this meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the Open Meeting Law, GLC 30A, Section 18, and the Governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather in one place, this public hearing of the Town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which is provided on the Town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the Design Review Board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please say aye or yes to acknowledge your attendance for the record. Lindsay Schnarr. Yes. Janet Marquard. Aye. Erica Zikos. Yes. Tom Long. Present. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Paula Planner and staff liaison to the Design Review Board. The Design Review Board and its accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting on October 1983. The charge and purpose of the Design Review Board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district, and the town common design review overlay district. Design review was also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alteration to the form or appearance of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recording will be uploaded to the town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting, after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. After the board has com completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective app application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board and building commissioner. And we have tonight's agenda. I wanted to ask you, Maureen, if we have an, as we go through these, if we, uh, we should probably ask for any public question or comment on these, uh, as we move through, I don't know whether we'll have anybody. Would that be that be the way we should do it? Uh, sure. If okay. if if the board wants to take public comment for um, the applications, is the board okay fine. with that? Go, we go through the various applications here, rather than have them <clears throat> all come at the end. Okay. Okay. Let's, all right. Well, let's get started. Are we going to go in the order here, DRB FY 2021? Um, seeing that it looks like uh, uh, um, Surly Non is not here yet. Okay. So um, I know that Stephanie Chicarello is here from the town okay. to talk about right. the bike share program. Sure, so perhaps that she could go first. Yeah, okay. Okay, all right. So um, I don't know if did you... Um, Okay, so I can stop my share and then let Stephanie okay. um, talk about. Okay. So oh, I, now I have to make Stephanie uh, 
a panelist. Hold on, Stephanie. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Hello. Thank you so much for um, having me this evening or ap late afternoon, early evening. Um, I've been before you before with the previous bike share stations and the town has been able to work with uh, Valley Bike um, Regional Bike Share System in acquiring funding from the federal government through a congestion mitigation air quality grant for two additional stations for the town, uh, the University of Massachusetts is also acquiring a new station as well under this grant. So we're trying to formalize the locations that we are proposing to you this evening and looking for your um, support and feedback. Um, the general location of these sites is gonna be, um, is, is pretty much locked in because of the grant funding, um, but the exact location within the general vicinity um, is a little bit flexible. So I'm gonna to start to share my screen with you now. Okay, and you can let me know if you're seeing my screen. Yes. Okay, and is it large enough? Can you actually read what's on there? See what's on there? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, yep. I probably and uh, here. How's that? Yeah, Better. Uh, okay. Okay. Let's see. Why can I scroll up a little more? There we go. Okay. So this first map that I'm showing you, um, the circles that are indicated here, um, without any proposed language, are these are the actual stations that exist now for the town. So this is the one by the north what was formerly the North Village apartment complex on North Pleasant Street. We have um, the uh, town station um, that's in front of town hall. Uh, here we have the Kendrick Park station. This is the <coughs> University Drive station. And then we have the station down on East Hadley Road that's in front of the Boulders complex. So um, you can see that it, there's sort of a, you know, a kind of a, um, connectivity between these stations and that they're fairly close together and that's intentional. One of the things I like to reiterate about bike share is that it's not meant to be a leisurely uh, use for the bicycles. These aren't meant to be for, you know, a use for the day. They're actually kind of heavy. Um, they are electric assist, which is wonderful because it really allows more people to use them than otherwise might. But uh, it really is more of considered like a the last mile, if you will, between getting from, say, uh, a bus stop to your destination. So it's that last bit of transportation need that a bike share typically fills. So in part, that's also why some of these stations are so close together, because you're going to a destination and you may get to your destination and then drop off a bike and then come back out, get a bike and then continue. So the two locations that we're proposing before you uh, this afternoon, um, one is over here um, and I will scroll down um, in a moment in this one. So this one is the one on Southeast Street, which is at the Village Center and I'll have more images for you in a moment. Um, this is just to give you context of the location of this in relation to the entire network in Amherst. Um, and this other yeah. proposed is in the Pomeroy Village location by Pomeroy Lane. So this is a current configuration of what the stations look like when they're installed. This actually happens to be one of the stations on the UMass campus, um, but they all pretty much generally look uh, the same when they're installed. They have, if you can see right here, there's a, a docking system. And because these are electric assist, when they are, in, when they are placed back in this docking system, they're, they're being charged. So there is, um, uh, um, a wayfinding station attached, and I'm sorry that there's not an image of the wayfinding station, but the wayfinding station is attached. Um, and that's actually where the electrical outlet is, is uh, located. It's underneath in, within the box of the um, wayfinding station. And that provides power to the entire docking system. Um, the wayfinding station is also lit, but it's a pretty um, unobtrusive light that just sort of um, sheds light on the um, 
on the uh, wayfinding map because there is a map that actually shows the stations in Amherst that's at each location has a map of the of the network. So I'm going to start with the Southeast Street proposal. Now there are three locations identified on this map. Um, and thank you, Maureen, for this map. This is really helpful. So this was to show you where the three are in relation to one another um, and also where they are in relation to the bus stop. Now, the reason why we propose to locate the stations where we do is because they first, they need to be in the public right away. That right of way requirement is part of our grant funding. So that's a non-negotiable. Um, we could potentially put them on on private land, but that becomes more cumbersome. So the right of way is the first requirement when we're looking to identify where these stations might might be installed. The second requirement is that they be located uh, adjacent and near to a an existing either a bus stop or a train station or somewhere that's another public mode of transportation. So that again, Remember, this is to serve that last mile, so we want to have them near other pub public transit, so there's kind of a continuity, if you will. Um, so these locations here, um, oh, and I'm sorry, and the third requirement is that we also want them to be in densely populated areas. So um, we look for them to be near complexes. And if you uh, look at East Hadley Road, that's a perfect example of um, a really well used location. Um, lots of the residents in that um, in the complexes that that location utilize the, the bike uh, stations and the, the, the regional mm -hmm. bike share network. So these three stations, I will move along here, is to show you um, where they are located. This uh, right here is the bank at the mm -hmm. College Street and Southeast Northeast Street intersection or Southeast Street intersection. Uh, this is the bank. This would be Cumberland Farms right here. And this is a proposed um, a mixed use building that's being a development that's being proposed and there's a proposed bus stop bus stop that's um part of that construction um that would be located on on this side of the street and then there's one on the other side so maureen and i actually went out and took a look at this originally i went out with chris breastrip and we identified this as a fairly good location because we have a, as you saw, you know, in the map above, we have a, you know, we have a pretty much contiguous north-south orientation, but we really wanted to sort of broaden out to the east and west a little more. So, so this would be our eastern sort of east village kind of location, if you will. And um, the first stop that we identified, potential stop, a station would be here. Um, and the reason why we propose this one is really it's the most visible. And also there's a electric utility box, uh, um, a traffic channel uh, station box here. And so that would be a relatively easy for that to be connected, for the station to be connected. Um, we do need access to electricity. As I said, there is a little electricity uh, connection at the wayfinding station. So we do need to have access to power. Um, the second proposed location is here which is again nearest to the bank. And then we identified this as the third location. In some ways you might think this might've been the ideal location and why isn't this one first? But the reason why is because this setback here is not as visible. And one of the things that you want is visibility um, so that when people are traveling, they can see that there's a station there. So you really do want the visibility. So this kind of makes sense. And as I move down, we'll show you how, um, how these could sort of work in the field. The stations are uh, 42 feet in length and seven feet in width. And this first location, which is the, the sort of one we identified as you know, being the preferable location here um, would be, there is the sidewalk access. Um, people, the bikes would be uh, oriented so that they would be sort of at the back end of this. And so people would come in from the sidewalk and get the bike and then pull it towards the sidewalk and pull it back, I'm sorry. Um, and pull it back towards the sidewalk in order to, to then continue their, their ride. I'm sorry, I'm gonna mute myself for just one second. I'm sorry about that. Okay, sorry about that. Um, and then the second location um, 
uh, is a little further down. So this is where the first location was proposed. Um, we thought that perhaps if there were some concerns about this being too close to the street, that this location would also work. We did measure this in the field, so it is possible to actually get a station within this location, within this footprint. There is a tree here, but we think it would be far enough back so that it wouldn't really impact the root structures. A concrete pad is needed for this um, for this entire width, especially because it is on grass, so it would have to be um, it would have to be level enough, um, and then it would have to have concrete poured uh, to hold the the bike docks and to hold the um, uh, the bikes themselves. And then the third location, again, as you saw in the map above, is further down. Um, and this is where the proposed mixed use development is. And again, this um, this might have access in terms of electricity access. We might have to tie it in through the pole. That would probably require some trenching, which is more expensive, which is definitely a cost to the town. The um, the funding that we received does not cover the cost of the installation, nor does it include the cost of the concrete pads, but it does include the equipment and the docking stations. Um, so that was what the funding provides for. And I'll move on to the West Street location. Um, the West Street location, you would think we would have more than two options, but as Maureen concurred with me. Um, it really is very difficult to find a really adequate location for stations uh, in in the Pomeroy Village Center here. Um, we looked at over in this area, uh, but there's a detention basin right here, and there just simply is not the width and the the length in order to um, support a bike station in this location. Elsewhere, there's literally just not enough right of way, um, or there's a potential safety issue where there's not enough of a, um, a curb side uh, for people to walk or to safely be protected um, once the station was installed. So the locations that we have here, and again, I, I did originally identify this with the planning director, Chris Brestrup. Um, the location we identified here um, is um, in front of this, uh, this business that doesn't seem to be that active right now. I don't, I haven't seen much traffic. If it is in use, I'm not aware, but there's no parking back here. So there's no vehicle movement in this location um, versus, I'm sorry, I'm just gonna go up a little bit just to sort of show you um, anywhere else along here, this whole area in front here, you can't really see it, but there's parking and it's all at an angle. So if we were to put a station, even if we could put a station here, there's a real safety risk with, um, with vehicles backing out. It just doesn't work. And that's really true um, over here as well. There's just not enough of a clearance for vehicles to, you know, to be that close um, backing out to the, to the bike stations. So this location here, we don't have to deal with any traffic issues in terms of vehicles backing out um, from parking areas. Um, but how we would potentially um, do this would be to install the station here and it would be oriented so that the bikes are toward the street. So people would actually walk across uh, the back of this, of this station and access the bikes from here and pull the bikes out this way. Um, and then they would proceed on their, um, on their route. The other location, the other orientation in this similar location, we moved it a little bit down um, and we had it oriented so that it's actually um, further back towards the property line uh, within the right of way. But in this configuration, people would actually back the, the bikes out this way. Um, uh, it's a little bit closer. The reason why we moved this and proposed this orientation is that we know um, that there is a proposal to uh, redo the village center and that there are eventually sidewalks that will be proposed. So I can't confirm for sure that we would have sidewalks at this point. It may be that they would have to exist as they are with the concrete pads temporarily until sidewalks could be installed um, at a future date, which I could not tell you exactly when that would be. Um, but again, uh, 
this would be a shorter um, length of sidewalk before people would have to, um, for people to actually access from the bus stop, which is further, uh, further south of this proposed location. So I'm going to go back to, yep. Is that the Moan and Dove pub then? Is yes. It? Okay. Uh, it's not the Moan and Dove here. The Moan and Dove is further, uh, let's see, let me find. Moan and Dove, I think is over, is it over here, Maureen, or over no, here? Uh, it's right here, it's right here where, oh, you can't see my mouse. Um, <laughs> it's it's the bigger building. But, this uh, one, right. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah. No, yeah. no, yeah, I the think Moan and building is like the, um, uh, the used furniture store and the Pilates studio and all that stuff and behind the gas station, right? Aren't we looking, isn't this to the north of Pomeroy? So Pomeroy's here. Yep, this is just to the north, but this is not, this is not Moan and Dove. Moan and Dove is further down. It's not here. Oh. This is just a little, this is just a little, I, I don't, honestly, I don't even know what this, um, what okay. the business is in this location. Is that an old bank or? A, it doesn't, it, that's why I was saying it doesn't even appear to be used. I mean, I did see yeah. some vehicles parked there, but I don't even, it doesn't even look yeah. like it's in use, to be honest. I think the first can, can you building get, on that corner, um, if I'm not mistaken, is the gas station. Yep. And then isn't it Comolito, the Mexican restaurant and yep. Yep. the trading post and yep. right. Moan and Dove, and yep. that bigger building. And then Ste the one just above yep. it, the one that you're proposing to have the bike share in front of, that's that one. Um, I don't know what that is. Does anybody yeah. else? Sort of Moan and Dove is part of that larger building. I thought it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Moan and Dove. Can you see my mouse? Yeah. Now, so Moan and Dove is right here. The okay. gas station is here. I feel like this might be also a gas station. And then um, Mission Cantina is right here. And there's like a We bus. actually can't see We mouse, can't see your mouse. Oh, oh no, I tried still... to annotate it. Sorry. I don't know how to do this. Um, yeah. I mean, it's I, my understanding was it's in this building, correct? Yes? Yeah. Correct. <laughs> so it's just this is the, so, but where we're proposing is, you know, is obviously north of that. So it's not, and that's why I was saying the parking here is an issue um, because people are pulling out. So then that's why we've moved it north. Um, so there wouldn't there wouldn't be a similar uh, safety issue in this location. And we've talked about moving the sidewalks way back from the corner if they do a roundabout. So that would actually make more sense anyway for that. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, and again, you know, the bus stops are located here. Um, so they they are, you know, fairly close to an existing transit stop. Um, and again, you know, it's pretty um, clear that there's like a dense, um, housing um, unit units over here. So there's, you know, there's housing density uh, in this area, which is again, something that's very desirable um, for the use of these, mm -hmm. for the system. So I can stop sharing unless you want me to go to something, you wanna see something again. So we, shall we open discussion or was yes. there, is there more to show, to show us, Stephanie? I don't have more to show you. These were the slides that I have to present to you. Right. So should we, do you want to start with the Southeast uh, one or the, which one do you want to start with? Um, we can do it in order that I started. So there are the three proposed locations and okay. I can I can show this map. Uh, do you want me to continue to share or would you like me to stop sharing? I think it's good to see it. Okay, yeah. sure. So these are, again, these are the three proposed locations. Right, okay. All right. Uh, Erica, did you have some thoughts on Southeast Street? Sure. Um, first, Stephanie, thank you. A very thorough and um, easy to follow presentation. I appreciate that. Um, I, I think I agree with you here um, in the order of uh, preference, uh, one, two, and three. I think that three, just because that mixed use building should eventually get built, um, another reason to keep it lower on my list is that it'll feel this it, it's not physically on the property or in the construction area but it'll feel disrupted um, by construction at that location so I like one or two um, two may feel a little bit safer um, away from the the nose of the traffic as people are turning there um, but I uh, I'll go with my colleagues on on this did you say that a num <clears throat> that number that the second choice could access electricity on that same side? 
uh, you don't have to do a trench across yes. the road. Okay. Um, well, but there it is. I mean, I think it would probably have to access the same location as site one. Yeah. Okay. Well, so there is more distance. It it would. But it's be on more the side expensive. of the street. Yeah, it's on, yeah. Yes, but it is on the side of the street. But it still right. also will require, um, you know, more work and probably some trenching to to actually connect. Okay. I see only one little advantage for three is that it's closer uh, to the apartments across the street. There's that whole uh, group of Bonnie apartments. Village. Yeah, um, and they could walk across the street and, and get a bike, but it, there's only a few feet and they would be easy <clears throat> possible to get to number one or number two. So I think I like two because it looks like there's more room. Number one looks a little cramped, but uh, personally, I would be, I would support either one of it. Lindsay? I would agree that one and two are potentially preferred, but I, I think two makes the most sense given that it's set back a bit and doesn't look as squished. Right. Jan? I agree with everybody else. Okay. Tom? Tom? <laughs> What do you think? He just lost him. Oh yeah. no, he's gone. He's gone? Okay, mm -hmm. all right. <clears throat> I'm all sure right. he'll be back. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, are we saying we'll agree with one or two depending on how everything uh, final finally works out or do we want to sort of show a preference for two? There seems to be a preference for two. But okay, let's do a preference for two. Okay. Great. Okay. Okay, that's All right. great. Do you want to move on to West sure. Street? Yep, absolutely. There we go. So. Great maps. They're really good maps. Thank you. Well, I have to, I, I, I'm going to give Maureen the credit for these. Yeah. <laughs> I well, did some of this, but Maureen made it uh, even clearer, so yeah. I'm going to. Well, um, they're, they're really good. Okay, where's so, West Street? So this is West Street. So this is just north, north of Pomeroy. Right. And again, um, you know, this is a little <laughs> splitting the difference here because yes, they are, they are um, within basically the same area, but I think the difference um, here was really, um, and I, I think either one of them could be pushed back. So if you thought one should be pushed back towards the property line, that's certainly an option. I think the reason why we sort of proposed them this way was to sort of show the alternatives because even though one is a little bit closer to the street, people would be pulling their bikes out behind the station. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's that feature. Um, and another reason we sort of proposed uh, one and two is also that you know two is just a little bit more directly in front of the building mm -hmm. um so you know it was just a matter of just shifting it a little bit further north so i mean this general location if this general location were okay um you know it may get tweaked further by further review but if you were okay with this general vicinity and you had a preference to whether it's closer to the street or closer to the property line as a recommendation that would be helpful. If a sidewalk were built, um, would it include some parkway? Would like what we're looking at right now, would that be the sidewalk and there'd still be some grass? Or so this, with this? this would be the concrete pad. Um, and the way the bikes are, they pretty much take up most, you know, the length of the bikes, they're actually fairly long. Um, and they would take up most of the space of this pad. So there isn't really a, a pedestrian walk way along the back of the pad, really. Um, right. But you were saying there's a chance that a, a sidewalk will be put in along there. There could be, yes. Yeah. Where it would actually go on that. Right. I, well, yeah. we were proposing that it would sort of go on this, along this side. Um, if, the, if the station were located here, we'd probably propose it along this way. Okay, so it'd be right up against the street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And where are you getting electricity for this one? So this one, I believe there was a utility pole. You can see there's a street light right here. Uh -huh. So um, these have been, some of them have been connected to street lights. 
okay. to the same electrical service that's serving the the street light. They add um you know they add like a, a little utility box. Right. Okay. Yeah, I have a, another question. And what is it that would um I'm very concerned that people speed up rather quickly out of the stoplight there, and I'm um. I know that traffic calming is one of the initiatives of the renovation of this intersection, but um, I would think that uh, any sidewalk would come with a buffer um, between the street, you know, maybe a little bit of a, a green buffer between the street and the edge of the sidewalk um, as a pedestrian safety issue, because I know that's also been raised. So I like pulling it back, but I'm not convinced that having people, uh, having the nose of the bicycle facing east is going to work there with the sidewalk and, and leave enough space for the sidewalk. So I, it's really hard to design there to think about this design without all of the additional information. Maybe we'll get a sidewalk, maybe we won't, but if we do, um, I think 70 you suggested that the whole Thing might move a bit could move a bit to the east like to towards the building yeah um i think there was a reason why um when we were out there and i can't remember what the topography was like exactly yeah. out there i don't know that the we mound yeah i think it is mounded and i don't know that we would move it be really able to easily okay. move it further back which is why i think we kept it to these two yeah. locations and if you notice they're both pretty much in the same okay. footprint yeah but if you had number one, you could have the noses going towards the street and people would pull out onto a sidewalk if one were in there. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yes. Which I think is, it just seems better. So I agree. I agree. And then where the pad is would be the green space that would separate yeah. the sidewalk from the right. road, right? And then right. the pad just replaces that green up. space. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So was it, are we saying we, we are? favoring one is that I would okay yeah. okay with okay. the sidewalk to the east yeah yeah okay okay uh do we have uh Maureen anybody from the public who wanted to weigh in on this before we go any further if anyone has a comment uh, yeah. to provide they could uh press press the raise your hand button <laughs> okay okay not seeing anybody. Are we seeing anybody? Okay, so we've uh, offered our suggestions. And so just to be clear, is the, the DRB recommending uh, for um, Pomeroy Village intersection uh, the, the, the number the number one option number one. With, with the recommendation to the town council that a sidewalk be installed east of the bike share station? Mm. Yes, yeah, and it probably have to be given how close number one is to the street, but yeah, right. Okay. And they can decide as, That's you know, right. as the town council, does a sidewalk mean now? Does a sidewalk mean in a couple of years when the roundabout right. goes in? Right. Yeah, okay. And, and then um, for the other location, Southeast Street, uh, everyone, um, Tom, we missed you for a second, but uh, we, yes, uh, um, uh, everyone uh, preferred uh, option number two, two, which was closer to the in intersection, but on the um, More yes. uh, uh, further away from the road. Yes, yes. I agree. Okay. All right, okay. Uh, do I uh, hear a motion that we, uh, uh, to that effect, South oh. number two, Jan? <laughs> I'll move that um, the BRB endorses uh, the two bike share locations, um, number two for the Southeast and College right. intersection, and number one for the Pomeroy and West Street okay. intersection. Very good. Is there a second? Second. Okay, oh, thank you, Tom. Okay. Uh, I'll just do a little roll call. Lindsay? Are you in favor? Y yes. Okay. And Erica? Uh, yes. Okay. Jan? Yes. And Tom? Yes. And I, okay. It's unanimous. Uh, good work. Can I ask me a question before we finish? Yeah, sure. sure. Um, 
I don't know whether there's money possibly in the future for more of these, but I understand that you see them more as the last mile from public transportation. But it also seems to me that if we want to discourage cars, um, particularly going downtown and parking, that having them even further out at the edges of town would make sense because then people could just, especially where there isn't bus service, could use them to get to town. So, you know, maybe up at um, Cushman or down at Atkins or like where Eric and I are at the very southeast corner of town, there's no bus service, there's nothing. But if there were a bike share station, I would go into town and back that way. Um, right. So, you know, I, I realized how you've been thinking of it so far, but it would seem to eliminate cars better for those of us who have to always drive because there are no buses if they were even further out. Yeah. Right, agreed. Um, you know, um, it, it's not specifically my thinking. <laughs> it's, sure. you know, it's the, the evolution of these systems really across the country and actually even in other countries as well um, that have established networks. Really the modeling sort of is evolving from monitoring use Mm -hmm. So they're really looking at how did these get used and they don't typically get used from the outer, you know, they do. The idea is that you really do want to have them sort of in the center of town and sort of you want to start building them out that way, which is what we're doing. Um, and we're trying to get to the outer edges of town. I will say that without funding, these are really expensive mm -hmm. to do. So. I don't know that without the funding that we've had, we'd, ha we'd have been able to have as many stations as we currently do already. So, um, you know, future expansion is in part going to re rely on two things. One of them would be that there's some kind of uh, funding opportunity, either at the federal or state level. I've, I have made a pitch at the state level for these um, with the Department of Energy. Um, and then at the federal level, you know, certainly I would, hope that potentially with this new administration, maybe there'll be some more awareness about how bike share really can make a difference with transportation, because we know that transportation is one of the biggest contributors to carbon emissions. So certainly this is something that really can alleviate that um, at, at a very tangible and substantial uh, level. So I, I wholeheartedly agree with you. I just think the cost is somewhat prohibitive. So we're kind of limited. And I thought maybe more funding might be coming. I mean, when we first talked about this, we suggested yeah. the Pomeroy one and, you know, you said there might yeah. be funding and here we are. There, and here know. we are. Right. So. Exactly. So I'm going to be, I'm going to remain optimistic that this is just, there'll be more of this in the future. I really, I really believe in it. I think the difference for us is really the fact that this is an all electric um bike share network. I think the electrification makes all the difference because if these were just regular bicycles, mm -hmm. regular bike share bicycles, I really don't know that we would have quite the use that we have. I mean, to I don't know if any of you have attempted to ride one of these, but they are ex incredibly easy to use. And when you get on, the thing that you just have to get used to is once you start to ride because they're electrified, you accelerate pretty quickly and you go much farther. So you don't have to work as hard. You still have to work, but you don't have to work nearly as hard. Hills, um, it literally feels like someone is pushing you up the hill yeah. when you're riding up the hill yeah. when the when the um, when the uh, motor is actually engaged. Yeah. So there's a lot, you know, there's a lot to really um, to them that being electrified that really makes the difference for us. So I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I really hope we can continue to expand this system. I think um, even these two will make a difference. Uh, and this doesn't even um, include the stations that are on the UMass campus. And the UMass campus has really been a large contributor to the use that we get in Amherst. Mm -hmm. Amherst is uh, of the entire network within the region. Amherst is one of the highest, we have the highest number of users um, in Amherst as well as in Springfield. So, um, you know, and that has a lot to do with the university and the students. And that's what we want. We want them to stop bringing cars to make trips into town, so. Also the bike path, I mean, again, I know it's expensive, but having them at the beginning or the middle of the bike path. Right, would be really good. Yes, we need Hadley on board. <laughs> it would be really nice to have Hadley, um, you know, join on. But um, but we have South Hadley. 
and we, you know we and we do have more communities that are uh, this round of funding that we um, received, we actually included, Chicopee is now included mm. in our network. We have East Hampton and we definitely have other communities, West Springfield, there are other communities that are starting to be more interested in being part of this. So the hope, the dream, <laughs> the real dream is that we would find some kind of you know network sponsor the way that they have in Boston. So for instance, when New Balance at one point was, um, was sponsoring the the stations um, when uh, Citibank sponsors new, uh, the bike share network in New York and it's called City Bike um, mm -hmm. in Boston now I think it's uh, Blue Bike and I think um, Blue Cross Blue Shield is now actually the official sponsor of the bike share program in Boston so we're really looking to find that level of of corporate sponsor and I think when if we can I think you know the more communities that we add on and the more visibility there is, you know, the likelihood that that may happen. So like Hadley I said, that's street. Involved at all? I'm sorry? Hadley hasn't gotten involved at all? Um, no, no, we don't have Hadley involved. Just everybody from here goes to Hadley for shopping. And if people could use the bike path or whatever for Route 9, I mean, in terms of students, it would make so much sense. It would be right. good for that. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't disagree. <laughs> Well, maybe we should go off to Park Archipelago. They're building all these archipelago. They're building all these buildings without parking. Maybe they should sponsor some of these bikes. That's a good idea. That'd be great. <laughs> yep. We, I mean, all of our stations, um, pretty much most of the stations in town need sponsors. I think the only, the only one I think that we have sponsored right now is the one in front of Town Hall and um, Cooley Dickinson uh, Hospital actually sponsors that one. Oh, interesting. Well, thank you. Thank you, you so much. Okay, thank you so Steph. much. Okay. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. Uh, All right. So next we have uh, 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 Shirley Don. I'll make her panel. <clears throat> this is Go Berry. Yes. DRB FY 2021-18. Okay. okay. Hello. It's, uh, uh, sorry. Hi. Uh, do you do? You, oh, hi. I'm in the car. Oh, okay. I'm pulling. Okay, but this is me. Okay. All right. Um, I, with the assumption that you can't share your screen, let me pull up your um, proposal. Okay, and so could you uh, introduce yourself to the design review board members and, and um, explain uh, uh, who you are and what you're part of the GoBerry and um, ice cream shop and um, if you could propose your, your design, your sign design. Okay. Um, yes, my name is Siri Nam Khalsa. And uh, I bought Go Berry from its original owner, Alex Feinstein, who still owns Go Berry in Northampton. And we closely coordinate as far as <clears throat> keeping the same formula, keeping the recipes, just the whole concept. It's a wonderful treat for our community. And we're finding that out more and more every day, how people are so appreciative that we're open. Alex could not open, reopen it because of personal matters. So I, I volunteered to buy it and open it. So right now we are fully opened and we have five part-time employees. And the only change really to the GoBerry business is I thought it would be a good idea to offer a couple of flavors of Bart's ice cream since they closed down. And some people rather prefer ice cream than the frozen yogurt. So in doing that, I brainstormed a different um, name for the business. And actually Anne from Amherst Works suggested Go Berry and Cream. And I thought it was great. So voila, there it is. Um, the, 
the signage is different in that we now have the farm design because of our local products from Maple Line Farm, our milk and Side Hill Farm. And we wanted to accentuate that. And that's what really differentiates us from other Froyo businesses in, in the areas. So um, just simply that would, that's the sign that would be on the window and the end cream would be added to the door. It, right now, the door already has Goberry on it. And that's basically it. Okay. Would you like to know more about me or anything else? So is there going to, <clears throat> is, is there going to be any color or is this simply going to be uh, black lettering on the window? It's white lettering. White lettering. Yeah, that's it. White lettering. OK, OK. All right, um, would the board like to weigh in? Do you have any other, did you have any other illustrations of what the door looks now, looks like now, or the window looks like, or is this the only uh, illustration we have? We don't have to look at the door. Yeah, only illustration. Okay. Okay, shall I just, uh, Okay, so anybody who would like to uh, have a question, weigh in. I just, does it all, does it say right now homemade every day? Is that already on the sign? Homemade every day, yes. It's already there? Yes. No, on, oh, I'm on the. Uh, Okay, I just find it a very odd thing that restaurants and shops do this because it saying freshly made makes sense, but homemade, it's not home. And I find this a, a bad misuse of that term. Um, and if you're changing the sign anyway, I don't know if you'd consider saying something like made fresh every day or freshly made rather than home, which it isn't. It's a business, you know. Okay, here we go. I see. Uh, well, so this is, this is in Northampton. Oh. There it is. You got it. Yeah, here. So, are you going to replace this sign completely? Uh, the one that's uh, the, hang the hanging yeah. sign. Yeah. No, that's that's Oops, staying right is for the time being. Yeah. Okay. So you're going because, to have. Yeah, people basically identify it as go berry. That's right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yogurt, fresh fruit, local dairy. Okay. We, um, sorry, I, yeah, uh, every I'm time sorry. I try to open uh, one of these, I, um, okay. Okay, oh, there we go. Here we go. So this is what the uh, door sign looks like with the white lettering. It says go berry, it has a blue uh, for the, I guess, blueberry and it says frozen yogurt. So you're going to take the frozen yogurt off, are you? And then, no, 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 that's not being taken off. That stays on, and we're just adding N cream underneath the frozen yogurt. Okay. This is fresh and local froyo, but th does that say froyo on the door? It seems like we got three different styles of signs going here: the older one that's hanging, and then the one on the door says frozen yo does it say frozen yo yo is a common acronym for yeah i know but that is i'm just get, trying to get clear because that's what's on the door now local froyo yeah, door says frozen yogurt but you're that's gonna right press and local froyo so yeah changing. Yeah, yeah that's my point that we um may not be a big point but uh are you gonna have this image of like a farm and that exactly the decal that goes on the big window mm -hmm. to the right of the door. Okay, to the right of the door. And right now on that window, what does it say? Um, what well, does there, was, there was originally nothing on the window. All right, okay. So the, what we're looking at is going on the window, you're going to 
So the core is going to change, or it will have end cream under go berry. The, exactly the way you see it, the decal. So that'll go on the door and the window. No. No, just uh, the door is just getting end cream put underneath go berry frozen yogurt. And then the image on the right is going on the window to the right of the front okay. door. Got it. Yeah, OK. OK. So it doesn't currently say homemade every day. That's new. Yeah. I just have one comment, and that is that I think it's great. I just might suggest that the N is a capital, like to match the cream lettering. Um, but the but the um, the the shorter the R E A M portion. And I'm curious to hear if you had a reason for going with a lowercase N that's the same size versus an uppercase N that's that size. You know, I think it was just. A, a <laughs> an aesthetic uh, decision that I tried the capital N and I just felt it was too dominant. And I didn't want that to be dominant. I want the cream and goldberry to be the dominant letters. Mm -hmm. Did I, you try cream? I think it just looks a little, just a like that thought. Um, Have you ever seen that sign? At any yeah, I, I think that the the apostrophe n is a nice um, approach. I just think that it looks it looks like a different font and a little um, a little out of place to my eye. And so I'm wondering if there if I guess to hear other people's thoughts on that. Yeah, I'd like to see what it looks like with cream, the R E A M, in the same lower case as the n. Well, I tried that, and again, it to me, I wanted to accentuate the word cream, and that's why I left it in caps. I like the caps and cream because it matches the, the berry. Um, I think that that all feels cohesive. It's just the lowercase, and maybe if it's smaller, um, it's just, I think, being the same size as the all caps, um, but shorter REAM just feels... It just feels odd to have the lowercase um, at that scale to, to me. So that's, I think, what I'm responding to. Yeah, yeah, no, I appreciate your, your feedback. I, I did, believe me, we, <laughs> we went through a lot of variations of this with my wife and other people. And we found that when we made the end, the font smaller, it almost disappeared. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to keep it lowercase, but have it that size. Um, another question, the fresh and local Froyo, the letters are more spaced out and ice cream is kind of compressed. Is there a reason for that? Um, no, no, it was just the way that when it was centered, that's the way it came and ice cream's two words. Um, and again, we did not want to emphasize the ice cream because it's mainly a frozen yogurt shop. Mm -hmm. Oh. So we, we took all this in consideration, you know, um, and this is what we came up with, with uh, Amherst Design people, and we like it a lot. Um, Suriname, thank you for keeping Go Berry alive. This is a fantastic gift to me personally <laughs> and to the town. Um, I, I do, I, I was going to pick up on... Um, Jan's question about the ice cream. I see a number of, of small anomalies that when taken in combination with the existing old sign, the hybrid of new and old on the door, and then this brand new sign on the window, um, kind of all add up to it feeling a little more eclectic than I would like to see. Um, and so if, for example, the spacing of fresh and local froyo, the spacing of those letters was the same as and ice cream, that would make that portion of the sign feel more cohesive rather than two slightly different letter spacings. Similarly, you've got the plus sign for and in the top line and an ampersand for and in the bottom line. Um, that along with an apostrophe n is another way to say and makes it kind of confusing to me as a 
as a designer. So um, I think that fresh and local Froyo and ice cream should have the same abbreviation or character for the and symbol. Um, if that were possible, I think that that would clean it up a little bit. And then maybe also to give it just a little bit more vertical spacing between and cream and fresh and local Froyo, that would help that portion of it to stand out more like you were hoping it would. I agree. I think fresh and local Froyo right now is left and right justified go to go same as Goberry, whereas ice cream is just centered. Maybe you could just center fresh and local. Um, and I agree that the plus and the ampersand and the apostrophe are just too many abbreviations. <clears throat> but then, yeah, I, I, I see where you're going and I agree, but then I do, I'm not sure that, that the solution, if you have fresh and local Froyo and ice cream, almost too many ands. I, I see, do you have some other, something else, Erica, some other way to repair that? So if we don't have fresh and local Froyo and ice cream, you know Do you I mean? really need the plus sign? Can't it be just fresh local, fresh local Froyo without the plus? Oh, that could. Well, honestly, I, I'm taking this from Alex, who is the original owner, and he has this decal on his Northampton store, and it's um, well received, and it looks great, and we didn't see any reason to change that. It made sense to us. Of course, well, you're changing it though because you're adding to it. So yeah. it's you're 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 distinguishing your store is different from his by adding ice cream. So it's com complicating the logo in a way that his isn't, and that's yeah. why yeah. as designers we're suggesting these these streamlined um, ideas. Yeah, fresh local froyo. Yeah, I like that better. Well, yeah, I understand changing. I mean, having both the ends the same that doesn't work for me one yeah i could I, that, that shouldn't be a problem but i think the other suggestion fresh local froyo <laughs> um just delete that uh plus sign where did what would members feel like if it said fresh comma local froyo plus ice cream no the comma is superfluous and yeah. it's just another mark I don't know. I hesitate well, I, to say that we have to change how he refers to his business. I, yeah, I, agree. I think it's a design issue, not a branding issue. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think that's the language that business wants to promote and that's their prerogative. And I think I have yet to see a good sign in all of Amherst that <laughs> has the proper spacing and the proper lighting and the proper typefaces and uh, as a professional graphic designer there are about a thousand things in here that I want to critique the heck out of but I don't find it in any way offensive or problematic to have these things in a local shop downtown um, that you know for me feels like it's you know it's a new local shop or updated local shop like I mean Everyone just layers on their graphics and adds new things every other week to most of the shops around. And I feel like this is just another, you know, um, I, I don't think it's perfect. <laughs> I don't love it. And I want to critique the hell out of it, but I also <laughs> well, I, I think, I think, you know, for, for what it's trying to accomplish, it's only 32 inches, which is actually not quite that big. Um, so I, I'm not offended by it um, at all. And, you know, I, I, I would say just, go for it. I mean, I do think there are things you can tweak and maybe the designer wants to take one more close look at things to make sure that all those things are matching. But um, but otherwise, um, I, I would be happy to approve it as is. Yeah, I mean, of course, that's why everybody comes to the design review board, because maybe there is a little uh, idea that uh, people can accept, but uh, I mean, you're certainly entitled to go forth with this sign, but but I want to be sure we, uh, if there are some specific recommendations, even if he doesn't want to accept them, that we be sure we've got them down. So, Tom, you're saying go as it is, and Erica, your suggestion is if he would like, what would it be? Take away the plus. Mm -hmm. What's the Take word? Away. To make the 
abbreviation for and the same character in the two lines, fresh and local, Froyo, and the second line, and okay. ice cream. Okay, all right. Lindsay, any thoughts? Um, I think I, I think the N is still the biggest thing that's catching my eye, and I, I do agree with the other things that people have mentioned, the spacing and the multiple um, ways of saying and also caught my eye, but I think it's the end that trips me up the most. That being said, I also hear Tom's point that it's it's kind of a, um, you know, it's it has character and it's it's fine the way it is, but I think just in terms of our eye as graphic design crit um, critics, you know, that's what we're here for. These are the these are the recommendations that we're offering. Good. And just yeah. to remind the DRB members that your recommendations are actually not for the applicant. It's they're for the building commissioner in this case, okay. um, who will be you know approving the the needed permit. All right. Okay. And Jan, anything you want to add on this? No, I think I made my point. I mean, yeah. I realize it's a local place and it's it's homemade, so to speak, yeah. but. Um, I think that we're trying to keep the quality of um, imagery downtown at a certain standard, and I don't think it hurts to make suggestions to improve it. Um, I, you know, I, I definitely think that you could change the ampersand to a plus, for instance, and change the spacing a little, but it's, you know, again, it's, you can tell the building commissioner and then he'll tell you and you could do what you want to do. That's right. <clears throat> Well, my only thought is that you're essentially with three different signs. I mean, they all say go berry and everybody knows what it is. And it's not going to make anybody uh, not go in, go in the door because of the fact that every sign seems to be a little at odds with the other one. So uh, I'm no major thoughts on that. So uh, Maureen, do we, you have jotted down our limited suggestions i have okay so would somebody like to move that we uh essentially we approve the sign but we do have some uh su suggestions is that how would is that how the building inspector would like us to give him those sure yeah i mean it sounds yeah it sounds that um you know, uh, at least four out of five members have suge specific suggestions. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I can put those I into the memo. Okay. And okay. I will say the building commissioner, you know, thoroughly listens to recommendations. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> so, you, you know, and they're often conditions of permits. So yeah. okay. it's not that the building commissioner just reads it and throws it away or, or, or something. Yeah. So well, this yeah. board does have a voice. Okay. Well, the applicant, say that. can he can obviously ponder all this and if they want to make any changes that's um, according to what we've been talking about, that would be good. Uh, do I also I want to just agree with Erica that I'm extremely excited that this is going to live on. So, uh, would, yeah. and with Bart's, I think that's just a fabulous yeah. idea. So that's a good idea. Uh, we, we really appreciate it, at least in, in our household. Yeah. yeah, here too, except we just want chocolate. There's yeah. never been chocolate. If Bart's comes in, put chocolate in. <laughs> okay, do I hear a motion to- I'll also move that we oh. approve with our suggestions. Okay, is, is there a second? Second. Any discussion, further discussion? I don't think we probably have anybody from the uh, community weighing in, but uh, all right. Uh, let's almost take a vote. Uh, all in favor, uh, Lindsay? Yes. Tom? Tom? Yes. Okay, good. Jan? Yes. Okay, Jan? <laughs> yes. And Erica and yes. Catherine, aye. Yeah, all right, there you go. I think, Maureen, that takes care of that. And yeah. we'll look forward to some Thank you. fresh yo-ho. Yo yes. <laughs> we'll be there. <laughs> but yeah, we pay our own way. We're not <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Okay, so next we have uh, planner Ben Brigger.
Okay. Who will talk about the sign at a right. cemetery? Great. Hi, everyone. Can you uh, hear me okay? Yes. Great. Thank you. So, yeah, uh, thanks for taking the opportunity. Um, basically, um, I am presenting a design for a new sign at West Cemetery, um, which is the downtown um, cemetery in Amherst, the most historic cemetery in town. And the we, you know, worked with uh, Seth Gregory on the design of the sign, so it matches the uh, kind of rest of the family of signs that we're developing for the town. Um, both, you know, I think probably most recently you all reviewed the Kendrick Park sign. Mm -hmm. um, similar, it's, you know, relates also to the wayfinding signs. And I think also the, uh, the writer's walk signs in a way as well. Um, so we have kind of a, you know, we're developing a plan uh, for signage in West Cemetery. Um, that's kind of a long-term goal. Um, as you know, Jan knows, we're, it's part of the Historical Commission's work um, to kind of improve uh, visibility of West Cemetery, access to West Cemetery, and interpretive material in West Cemetery. Um, there's also the uh, Amherst History mur Mural, um, which is on the back of uh, One East Pleasant. And, um, is you know a, an incredible uh, asset for the town and um, so we kind of have this long-term goal of putting developing signage for West Cemetery uh, and this is kind of phase one um, we want to have interpretive signage that talks about the mural and you know directs people to the Dickinson grave to uh, you know the William Smith Clark is buried there the uh, um, you know, other prominent names in Amherst. And then, you know, there's Civil War heroes buried um, in the cemetery as well. So um, the, the design of this sign, um, there, there is some urgency to getting it in the ground. We, we, we made a big push to revamp West Cemetery just in the past uh, few months in, uh, to get ready for the Juneteenth celebration, which is happening on June 19th in just a few weekends. Um, and so we'd really like to get this sign placed and installed by then um, just to kind of, you know, have a new look for West Cemetery. Um, so we've been working hard to get the sign designed and are uh, kind of bringing it to you guys uh, for to review it and um, look it over for us. So um, Maureen, I can, I can share my screen here. Um, I uh, did, you know, I, I only have a uh, PowerPoint at my disposal. So I tried to kind of put together a rendering that shows kind of the sign in place. Um, this is the existing sign that's out there right now. I don't know what this is made of. I think it's on a plywood backing and like a vinyl on top. But as you can tell, it is not aged well at all. It's, you know, you really can't even read it. Um, and so, but essentially, uh, I took the same, I luckily had a PDF of this uh, sign and I took the text out of here um, and uh, pretty much gave it to Seth to, to put it in the family of uh, wayfinding sign of, of the family of uh, town signs that we're developing. Um, so it has, you know, welcome to West Cemetery, National Register of Historic Places, 1730. Uh, this kind of block of text about who's buried there and kind of the history of the um, cemetery, you know, from 1730. We have a small map uh, that shows kind of the various areas in the cemetery. Uh, there's the 1730s knoll, the African American burial site in the back, uh, the Dickinson plot, and the 1870s section. Um, and then down here, it's the, you know, sponsors of the Amherst Community History Mural and the artist, and then the, just some rules and regulations for the cemetery and the hours. Um, the, uh, the current sign um, is kind of placed right here. Uh, the two uh, wooden posts support it. Um, and really, we thought the most straightforward thing to do was to just 
pull this sign off and put the new sign um, in the same place. This is my attempt to show that we're gonna kind of like put some stone, crushed stone down there and eventually hopefully, hopefully some plantings around there just to kind of make it nicer and also, you know, make, make it so, you know, for maintenance, you don't have to mow right up against the uh, side. You can kind of go around. Um, so yeah, this is the entrance from North Pleasant Street that you would see. Um, this is kind of at a slight angle looking down towards the road. Um, and this is kind of a straight on uh, shot of what it would look like. Um, and as you can see the mural in the background here. Um, I will say too, there was, um, there's a reason we're keeping it, whoops, sorry. Um, we just found, thought it was easiest to um, keep it, uh, use the same posts. Uh, we don't have to, they're in good condition, the posts themselves. Um, we'll, we'll probably apply, apply a coat of paint just to give them a fresher look. Um, and, uh, you know, that way we don't have to do a dig safe or uh, they're, they're, you know, just to check for utilities. We don't have to dig anything new, um, but those are solidly in the ground. Um, and we'll just put the new sign right on there. Um, and yeah, I think um, eventually we'll uh, kind of a long term goal of putting signs. Um, probably, you know, some low angle kind of interpretive signage along here to, you know, uh, teach people about the mural and kind of the different characters that they're seeing there. Um, and then also some, um, whoops, some signage throughout the cemetery as well to um, kind of help, yeah, for interpretive um, material. So yeah, I can um, certainly entertain any questions, feedback, thoughts, and um, eager to hear what you have to say. And can I just add that we did add a single sentence yes. um, bringing yeah. out the African American section, which was not on the original. Yes, topic. thank you, Jen. Um, I almost forgot. Yeah, so there, um, you know, this is in this cemetery. Uh, um, you know, it's just a product of history. The African American section is in the back here, um, and New Thompson was, Memorial. Yeah, yeah, the uh, Thompson Memorial. Um, this is also kind of directly related to the work we're doing, the historical commissions doing with the Civil War tablets as there's um, African American soldiers who served in the Civil War who were buried back here. So it's, and they were part of the 54th uh, Massachusetts Regiment. So um, fairly notable in history. And so, but we noticed in this block of text, which you can't read, um, but is uh, copied over here there was nothing about um, referencing the African American section. So we added a sentence just here along the cemetery's eastern edge, members of Amherst's long standing African American population are laid to rest, including soldiers who served in the Civil War. So just to um, make sure that history was being told. So is there a sign at the other entrance to the uh, cemetery off of? Uh what Triangle Street? Um, At this or, point, there's not. I think there there's the gate uh, with yeah. like two two stone pillars at the right. gate, and I think yeah. West Cemetery is inscribed in, uh -huh. the, in the. I center. always thought that was the official entrance. I never really considered the back end of mm -hmm. the, the stores as the official entrance. Yeah, it's a little skaggy. Not, nothing to do with you and the sign, but um, yeah. it looks a little skaggy. But so wouldn't there? Be the thought to have two signs one on the other yeah we hope to put a much uh, more prominent sign on triangle street um oh, yeah kind of a long triangle street that's like you know, or perpendicular to traffic and yeah. kind of really yeah. calls yeah, out okay. i don't want to derail everything here but. no no totally and um i don't i think it would be a it wouldn't have as much material on the sign because this is more for pedestrians as they're entering to come and read I okay. think the, tri the Triangle Street sign um, would be just big, you know, calling yeah. out, welcome to West Cemetery. Uh -huh. And the, the posts look crooked in every photo. Are they? Um, they're slightly back. crooked, yeah, leaning back. But we're going to, I'm working with uh, Alan Snow, uh, the maintenance and uh, Are they setting concrete? Are they going to be able to straighten those? Yeah, yeah. And painting them is a great idea, I think. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah. Any thoughts from the rest of the group here, Lindsay or Erica, Tom? I'm just curious what it's going to be made of and mounted on and how, how it's going to be secured to the post. Just curious about that kind of fabrication quality. Yeah, yeah, certainly. It'll be made on aluminum uh, with, a, uh, I think, six millimeter aluminum um, with kind of just like, a, I think it's a vinyl print right on the aluminum. And then uh, I think I think it's just going to be a fairly simple installation just because we need to do it relatively quick um, just with uh, you know, bolts through the corner of the signs right into the uh, um, posts, and we'd put uh, you know washers against there. Okay, I mean, I'm just curious because the signs like overhanging a little bit. I'm just want to make sure that the widths right because um, you don't want your bolts winding up in the middle of your art. That's all. Mm -hmm. Right. Like right now, like if I look at. I'm looking at the PDF that's online, but the face on shot, the way it's, it's, and again, it's just the way it's mocked up. So just make sure you have the right width. Like that bottom bolt would go right through whatever logo is in the bottom left corner. Yeah. So it's yeah, just exactly. like, you know, figure out where those line up and, and whether you need some space on the top and bottom to add bolt room or, uh, you know, me measure that first and then let's see how it lines up. Yeah. But I, I mean, yeah. I yeah, just graphically, it's fine. I, I just want to, yeah. the fabrication is going to be a tricky right. thing when you're working with yeah. those fixed posts. Right. It does look a little spindly. <laughs> the The new sign, uh, what the post is, they are, the, they, uh, if, it, if it extends, as Tom is wondering, to the edges of the, uh, of the two posts. Yeah, the, uh, the posts are exactly um, one edge to the, edge to yeah. edge, you know, okay. far edge to far edge, they're right. exactly two yeah. feet apart. Um, and the right. sign is 24 inches okay. wide, so it will okay. line up nicely. Yeah, I think okay. I made I made this rendering after, uh, before I measured, so yeah. I, yeah. I mean, if they, if you weren't using this post, did you have another plan B for posts? Because uh, I, I think, you know, I, I can see why I should just go ahead and they look, it looks a little hokey, but um, I wouldn't argue against using them. I just wondered if you thought, you know, if you, if, as looking at it, uh, you would have used another kind of post if the tree warden hadn't said, this is okay. Right. And anything else or, yeah, I, um, think, I'm, I, yeah, I don't think we need to take time on that, but I think when you paint it or stain it, it will certainly improve its overall look. And this is temporary. The idea is eventually there'll be more serious signage throughout the cemetery. So it isn't a permanent plan here. Yeah, I think the, um, yeah, as Jan mentioned, I, I think the, the design of the sign is, yeah. you know, something we're hoping to finalize, uh, you know, I uh -huh. think is okay. can be, you know, considered a final at this yeah. point. Um, I, there's some, yeah, I, I, I would hope eventually to, um, yeah, you can see it's leaning here to, okay. uh, to find a, kind of more permanent solution. I, I imagine kind of as we develop this system of signs, we might have a consistent kind of mounting uh, idea, you know, whether it's like black poles or granite posts yeah. or something like that. But um, for this one, we're just kind of working with what we have yeah. for right now. Yeah, I understand, yeah. That's such a great improvement. Yeah. Uh, Erica or Lindsay, either, do either one of you have any thoughts? Uh, we'd like to put forth at this time. Um, uh, yeah, I, I, I think the sign um, looks good. I'm glad that it's staying within the language of other signage that's coming down uh, the way for, for the town. Um, I want to make sure that it's uh, readable <laughs> so that it doesn't get mounted too high. And I see that you really aligned the top of the sign with the top of the posts. And based on the top of an average fence, I think that the majority of that block of text will be at about, you know, average person eye level. Um, but there's a, there's a lot of assumptions there. So um, yeah. yeah, I'd say that, the, I mean, if 
I know this isn't subject to um, ADA rules, but you know, if if you were to consider that, you'd want the the top. Um, well, technically, I think it's like the bottom of the highest line of text to be at 60 inches. Um, that's the concern that I have just to make sure that it's accessible and readable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, and then uh, this is a, a tiny thing, but um, I'm curious about the, the use of the, <laughs> the apostrophe um, with the dates. Um, it's the 19, or the 1800s section, and there's an uh, apostrophe. Is that because the section belongs to the, Jan, maybe you can weigh in. Does the section belong to the 1800s um, or should that apostrophe not be there? Hot debate in editorial circles. Is what <laughs> Where is it in the text? On the map. On the map. Oh, oh no, if it's 1800s, no, it shouldn't have an apostrophe at all. No. I want that apostrophe to go away. Yeah, people overuse apostrophes. It's just plural 1800s. Yeah. I mean, you could even just say 1800. It doesn't even need an S, really. But you have it 1730s. You have it down there, too. I can see yeah, it. Yeah, there's two. Yeah, yeah, 1730s and 1870s. Yeah, okay. apostrophe is unnecessary. No, no apostrophe. Yeah, there. Good. Okay. Okay, good. I think it looks really nice. It, it does feel like a lot of small text. Um, but that's really my only um, critique of it. I think otherwise it looks it looks really clean. Um, I don't know if it's worth considering just kind of reducing the margins a bit on the white sides, like the underneath the, the top kind of band that says West Cemetery, um, reducing those margins just a bit to give, see what kind of space you can get. Um, I, you know, if, if you can go up a font size, I think that would help. Um, but otherwise, I think it looks looks great, and uh, maybe maybe painting the posts temporarily would be a good idea, just to give it a little bit cleaner look. Um, you know, just to just to freshen it and make it kind of all read more Yeah, maybe that dark, the kind of the dark brown that's the um, West Cemetery background. Um, if you could just make it kind of close as close as possible, just yeah. so it cleans it up. Yeah, Ben, what Erica said reminds me that the um, writer's walk signs are going to be mounted lower um, for wheelchair access. And I'm wondering if since those posts are just sitting there and you can set this at any point on them, whether you might not make the sign not necessarily sit at the top of them, but come down a little bit. Yeah, yeah, it certainly doesn't need to uh, be, at the, uh, be at the top here. Um, I think we, it's a, I, you know, actually I failed to mention it. it's 24 by 36, the, the sign. Um, so yeah, it can certainly, you know, if the top is at six feet, maybe then the, you know, the bottom here would be three feet. Um, but as Erica mentioned, maybe five, five feet should be the, uh, the top and I'm trying to think two feet off the ground might not be that much, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll play around with that and uh, kind of get it so that the main block of text is at, is at um, a reasonable level. Great. Okay. Any other suggestions? Okay. Well, it's a definitely an improvement. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I'm excited. I know um, we've, we've been working on a lot, a lot of signage and a lot of it's come before you guys. And I yeah. think Oddly enough, this one might be the first one that's actually uh, brought into reality and not just some, something we see on the screen. So I'm, I'm excited to, uh, to Good. see it. <laughs> Good. And Rider's Walk is right behind. Yeah, it is. It is. <sighs> Very close. <laughs> OK. All right. OK. So we've given you our best thoughts. And um, I don't know if we need a motion or you can not in this case, right? No, I, let's just, yeah, let's just leave it that you've heard us. We, we love it. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You'll paint the, the apostrophes. <laughs> yeah. Take out the apostrophes, paint the posts. Yeah. Okay. Great. Very good. Thank you, everyone. Appreciate yeah, it. thanks a lot. Okay. 
did we have another agenda item, Maureen, or? I, just uh, approval meeting minutes just for May 27th. I didn't get around to okay. write the the very short meeting minutes for yeah, May 26th. Yeah, I think 26. I said they were okay with me. Uh, I have one it, tiny comment, which is just um, take it or leave it, but it was um, the very end of the minutes. It says, and of course now they've disappeared. Where'd they go? Um, I, it, I'll just try to remember exactly. The wording was something like to keep the, the signage and that's there, um, the existing signage that's there with, uh, it, it just was a little unclear. I think you should have just said replace. It's just like a minor thing because it just makes it sound like you're keeping the current, current signage when we're talk, talking more about replacing it with something, either getting rid of it or replacing it with something that is their menu or whatever else. Oh, that menu board in the, uh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. Any other uh, corrections? All right, if not, do I hear a motion that we approve the meeting, the minutes as corrected? I'm still, I'm just still thinking what Lindsay said. I thought that we had discussed keeping it and putting a menu in it. Yes. Or replacing it with something. And so when I went through and checked it for Maureen, I think I had both. You could said either keep it for a menu or replace uh -huh. it with a new sign. But I don't have that. I didn't know that you could keep what's there and replace it with a menu. So I think that's maybe it's just the, but I don't I know it as well. It's it's a housing in the new glass yeah. Yeah. something in. Well, yeah. We thought yeah. we could just rather than putting up something else, they were hoping they could just slide a menu in it. Yeah. Yeah, that's what yeah. I thought. Then it was just my misunderstanding. You okay, Lindsay? <laughs> I'm fine, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, all in favor. I move to accept the minutes. Thank you. Is there a second? Is that the minute? Second. Okay. Second. Okay. Any any further corrections or additions? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. Okay. okay. All right, Maureen. Do we have any public comments? If there's any public comments, please. Is, are there any? Press, uh, raise your hand. I'm not seeing any hands being raised. Okay. Then that's the end of the meeting. We have we have, we have our next meeting date. We do not. No. Well, We're actually, um, I just received a, uh, 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 regarding Archipelago project at 11 and 15 East Pleasant Street, they are making possible uh, revisions to their plan and once those are submitted to the board, uh, then I'll reach out to schedule okay. a meeting. Yeah. Um, it looks like Hil uh, Hilda Greenbaum has raised her hand. Oh, all right. If you wanna. Go ahead, Hilda. Yes, I was having a hard time getting it to work. Um, I was not happy with the way that land was being maintained in back of one East Pleasant Street. It, it really looks like it needs weeds pulled, maintenance or whatever. And the reason I'm bringing it up is that the very clearly says in the zoning bylaw that there should be a 20 foot rear yard setback or all setback, side and rear yard for downtown properties that abut general residence. And the cemetery not only is general residence, but it is historic. And they allowed that to be five feet. And I think the reason I'm bringing it up now is because you've got 13 East Pleasant Street with the same issue, that they want to keep the five foot setback instead of the 20 feet. And I don't think that that's what we want to view from the historic cemetery, that, that somewhere in there, it's not your purview. I don't know who it is, who, who's in charge of there is landscaping provisions usually in conditions of permits that they can keep that looking a little bit better. But I, I wanted to voice that so that when it comes up again, you might be able to put some pressure on people to maintain the site of those rears from the cemetery and push for the 20 feet. 
Now that we talked about that um, already in this group, but also it mostly concerns historical commission because it's gonna affect the cemetery heavily. If they give them the variance to five feet, all the trees on that edge have to come down because yeah. they'll destroy their roots. Whereas the 20 feet would save many of the trees. And so um, well, I'm concerned about it on this group, but also for historical commission. Well, the more people that can weigh in on it, the better. Mm -hmm. because a lot of us are not happy with the way that building looks. I think it looks like an orange crate, and those buildings are not constructed very well. I'm very worried that, you know, in the short term, it may be bringing in a million dollars in taxes, but in the long term, I think it's going to make the downtown look quite slummy when they're not maintained. And that we're, in the long run, we'll lose tax money if, if you know, if up front you can't keep on top of some of these things as enforcing conditions. That's, you know, the more voices that speak, the more clout we all might have. Okay, yes, well, thanks for your comment. And I know Maureen uh, picked it up and we'll uh, include it with our minutes. And uh, Maureen, you may, do you know who to advise Hilda to bring those concerns to? Is it the zoning board? of appeal? Uh, uh, so Hilda, as, as I'm sure Hilda knows, uh, she could um, make a public comment orally or in writing to the planning board as they review um, okay. the, planning board. Yeah. the proposed okay. projects. All right. Okay. Thanks, Hilda. Anybody else there, Maureen? Uh, no. Okay. All right. And then so um, real quick, uh, I did receive an application for a proposed mural on one of the building walls at uh, Fort at uh, Wild Wildwood Fort Hill, uh, the elementary school on Southeast Street. Uh, Wildwood Fort River Fort River Fort River. Sorry, sorry thank you. Yeah. Fort River. Um, it's on their front facing building wall. So um, I just got that emailed to me uh, on Friday. Okay. So um, I will see when that. You know, um, I'll try to see if we can hold off until we have a couple more applications yeah, if, if that person's not in a rush. So right. Okay. Very stay good. Stay tuned. Okay. All right. If nothing else, then I declare the meeting adjourned. Everybody agree? Say aye. Aye. <laughs> aye. Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, guys. <laughs>